Hello, everyone. Welcome to another uh, Artist Loft uh, 101 drawing class with Michaels. Um, and this is a part two class from that we started last week on creating a feather triptych, mixed media feather triptych. So if you missed the class last week, that class is uh, archived on the Michaels website and it's also up on YouTube. I'll go ahead and switch to my desktop view and go over supplies in case you are just joining for the, the part two of the class, we are using watercolor paper. So we've got the Artist Loft six by nine inch watercolor pad, and we're using three pieces of that watercolor paper. We've got uh, sketching pencils, which we used last week. We've got water soluble wax pastels which are not to be confused with oil pastels and we'll be kind of revealing how those are going to work tonight. We've got some watercolor paint brushes. Uh, you're going to need a water cup and paper towels. Uh, the illustration pens, which we began adding last week. So we've got the 0 0.1, 0 0.3 and 0.5 pen. And I believe that is it. And then uh, I provided reference images uh, of these feathers. So I've got uh, this feather, which finally confirmed the, the type of feather this is. It's a barred owl feather. Um, Ray was the one who messaged me on Instagram this week and said definitively, that's what kind of feather it is. So there was a lot of chat. Uh, a lot of conversation in the chat last week about what kind of feather that was. Um, anyway, and then we had the, um, oh my God, the peacock feather. My brain stopped working for a second there. And then this, which we think is a pheasant feather, but it's a artificial feather that I got out of a little uh, crafting bag. And I misplaced the actual feather, but I've got a photograph of it. And all of those reference images were provided along with this supply list when you registered for the class. Um, before we get started, just a reminder to tag your work uh, that you make tonight with the hashtags make it with Michaels or Michaels classes and follow me on Instagram at Adrian Hodge art. You can even tag me directly at Adrian Hodge art. So I'll be sure to see it because there's a lot of posts with those hashtags. Uh, and then there's a couple of my business cards with some of my personal work and other places you can find me online like Facebook, um, so yeah. Okay. And then here were my completed, my completed feather triptych. Let me see if I can get all three of them on the screen at once here. Uh, so it, the finished result using these water soluble wax pastels is very much like watercolor. It's got a very loose watery feel. Um, there's some texture that I added with the wax pastels that's you know, a little thicker, but we're really going to be using the water soluble aspect of the, the wax pastels tonight to apply them like watercolor. Um, but before we do that, we need to finish adding the pen to um, to our work. So where we left off last week was about here. I did watch the playback of the, the YouTube video of part one, and I noticed that, you know, I was trying to remind everybody to draw very lightly with their pencils so that we can erase our pencil lines. And I noticed it was really hard to see some of my, my pencil lines in the, um, the YouTube. Usually when I draw, uh, when I tell you guys to draw lightly, I will still use a heavier pencil so that you can see my lines. But with this, I really stuck to drawing lightly the whole time. And as a result, you know, until I started adding the pen, it might have been a little tricky to see my pencil lines. Um, but the whole point of going lightly with the pencil was so that we can go lightly with the pen. And um, so as I'm adding the pen, I'm not putting a hard line around the, the drawing of the feather. And I'm not necessarily putting pen everywhere where I had my pencil. Um, so I'm going to just dive right back in and continue 
adding the pen and get that part done so we can move on to the color since we have so much to, to cover tonight. But are there any questions at this point about where we left off last week before I jump back in? So far, no questions. Okay, great. All right, so I'm just gonna take my, my owl feather and continue or finish adding the pen to, to my owl feather. All right, so I'm using the 0.1 nib and I didn't put all of the pattern in with my pencil because I knew that it would be kind of tedious. Uh, but as I'm putting it in, I'm using very implied line. I'm not, you know, applying it in a, a hard line. I'm not filling everything in continuously. So I'm being very loose and sketchy with the pen. So the whole point of, you know, laying it all down in pencil first was really just to stay in line with the step-by-step -step nature of this class and make sure that everyone could follow along very easily in drawing this feather. Um, but, you know, if you didn't finish drawing everything in pencil and you want to do like me and just go in with the pen, you know, to do the pattern and it feels redundant to draw it all twice, just try to be as loose and sketchy as possible as you add this pattern. So last week I described it like a heart rate monitor pattern or uh, the pattern on Charlie Brown's t-shirt, just like this zigzag pattern that alternates all the way down the side of the feather. And you can fill it in as solid as feels comfortable for you, or you can do it kind of like me and leave it a little bit sketchy everywhere. I might actually switch to the thicker nib pen before I start filling it in. Let me just get it all sketched out first. It's gonna take me just a minute to do that. It's pretty repetitive pattern here, as are most patterns. But one thing I do want to say is last week when people held up their examples at the end of the class, you know, there's all different types of styles of art that we we make. We are all individuals, right? Nobody here is a robot. So yours is going to look different than mine, even though this is a step-by-step -step process to creating this feather triptych here. If yours is looking different or you're having a hard time with the loose application of the pen and everything's coming out more of a solid line or heavier lines or the shapes aren't necessarily exactly like mine, just embrace whatever's happening. Try not to, you know, judge or compare too much. All things are are pretty acceptable when it, it comes to art. I always like to say the mark of whether or not something was a success is how satisfied you are when you're done. It's definitely, you know, we can change our expectations for ourselves throughout the process of creating something if it's not living up to our original expectations of it, we can just adjust our expectations, right? We don't have to consider anything less than in any way. Okay, so remember there was this one moment right here where the pattern kind of disappears and there's a lighter uh, part happening. So I'm not gonna fill it in as much right there. And then I'm gonna switch to the point three nib to fill in the, the darker parts of the oops. I think I just discovered one of my pens that my one of my children has probably been using. <laughs> I'm like what's going on with this nib? It's very 
very pressed in. My five-year-old has recently discovered that he loves drawing just as much as his big sister and she uses my art supplies for everything and I just let her at this point. So now I got two of them using my art supplies. It still works. I can just tell somebody has pressed down a little hard on this, this nib here, it's a little squished. So I'm bouncing around as I fill this in. That way I just get a, you know, keep my application loose and sketchy. I notice the more I stick to one area, I start to, you know, go a little more heavier handed and press down and make things a little more solid. But the more movement I have as I go, the more likely I am to keep things loose. And we can always go back in on top of this uh, water soluble wax pastel, this color after we add it and, um, you know, add some pen back in. If you joined me for the class on, oh, I think it was mixed media perspective drawing where we, we did the house in two point perspective and we added watercolor pencil, et cetera. I, said the same thing, you know, less is always more with the pen. You can always add it back in, but you can't take it away once it's there. So it's better to take your time and be slow and deliberate. And then, you know, if you want to go back in and add more, once you've stepped back, that's, you can always do that. like trimming your bangs. You can always trim a little bit more, but you can't cut them back. And it's the other way around with the pen. Anyway. Okay, let me skip to the other side of this pattern. There's so much pattern here. This one's definitely more condensed and concentrated. So I'm kind of using more of more individual lines to add it, especially up here at the top, because that's how it looks to me. It doesn't look quite so much as like a whole zigzag bar going across, but it's more like that. But honestly, as long as you're getting in the neighborhood of this pattern, it's going to look somewhat like this feather. Doesn't have to look like that barred owl feather. It just has to look like a barred owl feather. So I'm just keeping it really repetitive, except for these few moments where I've got this little wave coming in there where I, you know, put these little gaps or imperfections that were showing up. So every once in a while where I, I see that I sketched that, I'm just putting some longer lines in and then I'll just try to make the pattern follow that the contours of that wave right there. That way that comes across. Okay, I'm being mindful of the clock. So I'm going to zip it along here in about two minutes. I'm gonna move on to the peacock feather regardless of where I am on the owl feather. I can always 
jump to my completed example if I need to at the end. I run out of time. One thing I noticed I did on the completed example was I did put in a little bit of an outline around the edge, but it, it's very loose. So I haven't decided if I want to do that again or not. But I also didn't fill in all of the pattern completely on this side, like I just kind of sketched it. So once you fill in maybe three of the pattern, you can always, you can leave this implied line as you maybe just bounce around to a few places and fill it in. It will go much faster that way. And also, it'll help you keep it nice and loose. Okay, so let me go ahead and move on to the peacock feather, and we'll come back to that. We're ready to add our color. Back side of this to keep it. Okay, so a lot going on with this peacock feather here. Let's see how I approached the pen on this one. So I did put a lot of these little lumps in here, these little hair, hair like lines, because those really add to the, the three dimensions of these pieces coming off like this. And if you look really closely, you know, they have all these individual little hairs, feather hairs. So definitely want to put those in. as much as possible, but I'm keeping it real light. I'm kind of flicking my wrist as I do that to keep those nice and thin. Again, if you were a little more heavy handed with this, those would be showing up really thick. So if they're showing up really thick, make sure you're using your smallest nib pen that you have. Um, and maybe practice on a piece of paper, seeing how thin you can get the lines to be. I just saw it pop up in the chat that somebody didn't have the wax pastels. If you have some watercolor, that would work just fine because we're gonna end up with a very watercolor-like effect when we're done here but we are gonna be using the wax pastels in a direct way a little bit, but mostly we're gonna be using them like watercolor. There's a lot of repetition. If you're not super patient when it comes to re repetitive mark making, then I don't know what to tell you. <laughs> it's a lot of repetitive mark making with these feathers.
when I first started becoming a dedicated artist, treating art like my job, I started to realize how, what a mental break it can be from so many other things. I love doing anything repetitive and that's probably why I'm such a patient artist, but I think I have a tendency to overthink a lot of things in life, but when I'm making art, I'm not usually thinking about anything else other than whatever I happen to be doing at that moment. Like my brain is completely empty except for this repetitive feather line I'm making or this blue that's all I'm thinking about is that blue and I love that so finding peace with monotony is how you can turn art making into a meditative practice for yourself if you're impatient with that process then probably working with materials that allow you to be really loose and fast and are, are better for you. Okay, so I got all of those little baby's breast hairs on the ones that are hanging down. And then when I get up here to the busier part of the feather, I don't necessarily need to do that to all of them because I think the rest of them kind of disappear. Your focus, when you're looking at this top part of the drawing, your focus is gonna go more to the eye of the feather. So if you just wanna add those little hairs to a few moments, but then on the rest of them, just sort of flick your wrist and start with heavier pressure and then kind of flick your wrist up so that the, the line becomes wispy and disappears. That might take a little practice to make it happen. If you're using a pen that's running out of ink, that can be very optimal to making your line disappear like that sometimes. So Adrian, um, a question just came in. Uh, Michelle would like to know what surface you're working on. The uh, watercolor paper. Perfect, thank you. Yeah, we're using the six by nine watercolor pad by Artist Loft. So we just, last week we, Pour off three of those and that's what we're we're making these on. We're also going to use a spare sheet of watercolor paper as our palette in just a moment when we start adding the, the color with the wax pastels. Okay so I'm going to do the same sort of thing here for the edge of the of the eye part is what I'm going to call it. So this edge layer, I want that to stand out and really just, you know, it's up to you, whatever you want to stand out. I know some people are doing this project with other feathers. They're not necessarily using my reference photos. So if you're using a different feather, you know, just take note of what the most interesting parts of your feather are, you know, especially not all peacock feathers are the same. They all tend to have those same, you know, prominent colors, but, you know, the blue may be more dominant than the browns or the, the greens. Um, so, you know, it might be darker on your feather than it is on mine. But what's interesting to me is these little imperfect moments, the little gaps that show up. So I want to emphasize some of those gaps in between the little feather hairs. And then I'll put in, you know, some of these lines, but not all of them. But if you really like the look 
of putting every single line in, then by all means, put as much detail as you want in yours. I just, in my personal work and my personal style tends to be very dreamy and ethereal. And so that's just how I do things. But if you want to do them in a, a different sort of style in your style, which is not that way, try not to be too influenced by, by me pushing my style on you. listening to an interview with a, a writer who I, I really admire recently and he was talking about teaching writing workshops and how he will end a semester or you know a course and there will be all these these people writing short stories that are so influenced by him <laughs> that are you know almost something he could have written and then there are those who take his his influence and you know turn it into their own you know I'm always flattered when I see people imitating a style that I use but I love when I see them incorporating techniques in their own way as well nothing wrong with imitating someone's style until you find your own for sure. Especially if you're giving credit. Hopefully you always are. Okay, so there's this moment inside of the feather that I, I outlined in pencil to make a visual note to myself when I started adding the color and that was just how much color variation there is in the center there it gets dark black and then there's like this midnight blue and then there's purple and then it's more of like that grayish brown right there so I don't need to outline everything that I did in pencil I mostly did that for myself so that I you know could remember when I got to it with the color that I wanted you know I didn't want to just fill that all in with black or blue okay, so I'm gonna stop there it seems like we've got so much left to do with one feather left, but that last feather, if you guys recall, has very minimal information on it. So and we already started adding some pen to it last week, or at least I did. So there's my, my completed one and there's the, the image of that feather. So this one we can definitely use our thicker nib pen, like maybe I'll use the, the 0.5 it's because it gets so dark black right here. There is an ant on my desk, an ant on my, on the paper. I'm doing that same little wrist flicking action here and I'm putting a lot of parallel hatching lines and I'm just moving up the contours of the feather like this, following the directional path with all of those hairs, basically just winding down the side and doing that. And then I'm gonna go over it again, fill it in, try to keep it heavier at the bottom and lighten up on my pressure as it goes towards the edge. And then the more I look at it, I might switch to a smaller nib. Go back, go back to the O1 here. Go to the edge with a lighter line.
Okay, and I can always fill that in again later. Now I'm filling in this black part in the pattern. Oh dear, something just fell off of my studio maid's desk. That's kind of creepy. Okay. Not to get too turned around with this pattern here. Okay, so there's a little gap of turquoise and then it's black again right here. I'm going to see how I resolved that in the other one real quick. I definitely wasn't this careful where I was filling in the other one. I think I just kind of scribbled and filled it in. Go ahead and do the same thing here. I also drew it much smaller the last time. I think I said I was going to draw it smaller this time, and then I ended up drawing it pretty big. This darker area is much bigger in this drawing. I'm just going to scribble and fill it in with a scribble technique. Okay, and then about right here is where it turns into the very fluffy part of the feather. I'm going to leave all that blank. this area to be dark. And then I'm just going to give it kind of a loose outline on the other side the way I already did here. Make it very, very loose there. And I can always add that later if you're like, mm, not sure if I want to do that to mine. You can add the, the color and then always add that in later. Okay, so we're finally ready to add this water-soluble water wax pastel. Let's start with this one, actually, since it's so monochromatic and easy or easier, less complicated in color than the other ones. All right, so we're going to mix our colors we're going to use a blank sheet of watercolor paper and we're going to mix our colors separately on the, the paper and then we're going to add water. So essentially we're just going to create swatches of, um, oh my gosh, what's going on here? Just trying to pull them out of the box and I'm having some issues. On. How are they stuck in the box? There we go. Okay, um, so I'm using, I want this dark blue and the light blue and need a little bit of white. And then we want the black and the brown. Those are the colors, okay? If I had more time, I would go into color mixing and color theory, and perhaps I will find uh, a class to do that uh, down the line. If you've been, you know, following Mike Southern with all of his, his painting 101 classes for artists lost, I'm sure he's got some great um, complimentary classes on, on color theory at this point, but I'm just going to, I've just done the work for you. I'm just going to tell you which colors to mix together to get the colors that we're looking for here. So um, we really don't have to mix that much. Honestly, a lot of these are going to be kind of separate. So I'm going to just scribble with the color and then just color with the color. Just make a little swatch. <clears throat> 
And then I'm going to make another little swatch with the lighter blue. So I did one with the dark blue, one with the light blue, and then I'm going to combine them. I should probably have started with the lighter color first, but it honestly doesn't matter because so we're going to combine them just like that, just scribble them together, kind of layer them on top of each other. And then I've got my water cups right in front of me. I'm take all these lovely watercolor paintbrushes and use a medium round brush. And I'm going to get my paintbrush loaded up, get a nice puddle of water going, and then I'm going to paint with some water on top of them. So this little uh, scratch paper of watercolor is going to get pretty messy. You might even end up using two of these. But so we're just going to create a swatch wash, a wash out of our, swat our swatch. So we're going to paint and create a little puddle of that color that way. And I think that's pretty close. That ends up looking a lot like the, the turquoise that we want, just mixing those two blues together. So if you want it to be a little lighter, you can take it you know, somewhere else on the paper, water it down a little bit more. And then I'm just going to fill in, quickly fill in everywhere where I want that to be that really light turquoise. Where's my picture of my feathers? You know, and honestly, if you like the way that color looks and you want to put it just everywhere on the feather, you're more than welcome to. Okay, and then actually, yeah, I'm going to go ahead and fill in all down here with that as well or at least the outer parts of it where it gets, where it's pretty blue. It does get kind of dark black in the center there of, of the feather, but we can add the, the brown black in later or in just a moment. But yeah, see how that just, I mean, it just works like watercolor. So if you've got some watercolor, you don't have the, the wax pastels but then the fun thing that you can't do with regular watercolor is now you can take the wax pastel on top of that and you can create some fun texture with it. So you can kind of let it go into the, the watercolor and let it bleed a little bit into it and it just adds another texture. I think it really adds to the, the feeling of that tufty other business there. Okay. Um, and then if you want to add just, you know, do some dark blue in some places. Just add another dimension to it as well. Let it let it bleed. That is the number one technique to use when you're working with watercolor. Work in layers let it bleed and then let your layers dry because it always looks different dry versus wet. All right, I'm ready to add our brown and black there. Scribble with my black. Scribble with, oh wait, that's not brown, is it? Get out more red. Here we go. That looks brown, but it's actually, this is the brown. More of a... Deep red. All right, so I'm going to mix that brown and black together. And you can switch to a different paintbrush too, if you want a smaller paintbrush for this. I'm going to stick to this medium round. I want to let it kind of bleed into that blue. So I want to do it while the blue is still wet so that it bleeds. And if you want to add another layer to this, if you're not thrilled with how it's looking now or it's not as dark as you want it to be, resist the urge to add 
you know, multiple layers now. Like you want to let each layer dry, just like really when you work with any water media, that's the, the best policy. I'm filling in that brown and black up here. So this is why I said it's not really necessary to go all the way to the edge of the feather because once we add our color, we can let our color go to the edge of that line. And then, you know, our eyes interpret a line, even though the line isn't there. And that's how we get that, that loose quality to happen. Oh, Adrian, another question came in um, from Michelle as well. Um, can those swatches be reconstituted after they dry for future use? Probably not. Maybe you can try it. I don't know if the paper will be able to handle rewetting multiple times, but I mean, it's a pretty low, um, what am I trying to say? Low risk. You know, I mean, it, it's easy to color another swatch. Thank you. Possibly. I did not attempt to reconstitute, so I'm assuming it might not work so well, but only because I can tell that, you know, I kind of used it all up, you know? But it, it definitely is a magical little process. I was very pleased once I attempted to do it that way because I was trying to use these like oil pastels. I was trying to just blend them and layer them and they were just, you know, they're wax and they weren't quite in their, you know, water soluble. So I was like, well, let me try adding some water to them. And lo and behold, <laughs> that was the magic key. Okay, um, what else do I need here? It gets kind of dark black and blue. I'm gonna do a little black and then some blue. Maybe some light blue next to that. Yeah, I said last week I was gonna bring my not so great attempt just to show you guys how I struggled with the wax pastels, but I didn't grab them, so. Okay, I'm gonna, and it's really fun to just, you know, just paint with it. Just, you know, you can draw with your paintbrush and get some different kind of lines going. Let me switch to one of my smaller paint brushes for that thin line. The just dark blue, I think. Yeah, you might be able to, once they dry, reconstitute them if it's still a nice little pile there. I just, it seems like the paper kind of starts to give way at a certain point, so it might be easier to just make another swatch. Okay, I could have probably added this at the beginning, but I forgot. I might go in and, you know, add some more detailed dark blue once everything's dry on that. But that's pretty good for a first layer. I always forget. I try when I'm making these demos to not, you know, spend more than an hour, but, you know, it's easy to get lost in what I'm doing. And I probably spent more than an hour adding color to, to these examples. Okay, so let's do the peacock feather. Next, because that owl feather is doesn't take quite as much effort. All right, so the peacock feather has a lot, a lot going on there. So we're gonna need. Let's start from the the center and work our way out. So, but again, we're gonna work in first layers, and if we want to add a second layer, we'll wait for it to dry and come back to it. Because I do recall this got. It's very easy to make this muddy if you try to push it too much. So uh, I'm gonna work in the middle and it, you know, I think instinctively, this is what I was doing, you know, in my, the ones that I'm judging that I thought were 
failed attempts are not so great. The way that I was doing those is I was coloring inside of the feather with the wax pastels and then going on top of that with the paintbrush. So if you've already jumped ahead and done that, like I saw some people last week um, had already added color, you know, that's fine. Um, I just feel like I had better control over the blending that was happening with the uh, wax pastels if I added the color with the paintbrush first and then went back on top and added, you know, any, any texture that you might want to add um you know on top of that because yeah if you put no i mean look the way that we just blended those color swatches how those colors blend together really quickly so if i put the wax pastels down here first and put all those colors and then add water on top all that's just going to bleed together and get muddy really fast so take my word for it i had about three different peacock drawings that all got very muddy and gross before I realized that was honestly how I realized I was like, oh, I wonder if I, you know, make a swatch over here and then add water, then I can just add it directly with the paintbrush. And then I was like, oh, I think that's the ticket, even though I don't know if that's, you know, was the factory intention for these, but it definitely works. Okay, so inside of the eye there, um, I want it to be black, where I indicated the black. And then I want this blue. But I'm going to put a little bit of purple next to it. And this is where you have to just accept that colors in nature are just, you know, so gorgeous and vibrant sometimes. And it's really hard to duplicate them in, in art making. Mm, hey, Adrian, yeah. um, there are a couple of questions. The first one is, um, is there any way we can put the, the reference on the screen as well? Uh, I can try. Anywhere. Yeah, I mean, that's why I provided the, the reference photos. It's hard to get everything on the screen all at once. Um, let's see. Oh, it's just so big, it keeps going into my, my drawing, my painting area. Nope, not quite. Yeah, sorry folks, it's the feathers just so big it's going to get in the way of my painting I can kind of let it creep in there a little bit, but i'm going to end up pushing it out of the way or else it's going to get in the way of my paintbrush. Um, so i'm just adding this purple. Where i'm seeing it and just accepting that my purple is not quite as vivid indigo blue purple as i'm seeing on the feather so you just get as close as you can to those colors. But again, if you don't hit it with the first, if you don't get, you know, hit the mark you're going for with this first layer, let it dry and then come back to it. Because if you try to keep adding layers, it's just going to get muddy. I might go back in with the black a little bit since it didn't quite bleed as much as I wanted. Ooh, that looks really nice. All right, I'm going to leave that alone. That looks good enough. So we have a question from Ashley. Um, are there any keywords on the types of pen to indicate the ink won't bleed when it's um, near water? Um, yeah, most pens will say uh, waterproof or permanent um, ink. So which these pens don't say either, but, but they won't. Um, if you're not using the Artist Loft brand, but you're using a, a permanent ink pen. Permanent does not necessarily mean waterproof. So you want a pen that is waterproof. So you can either test it to make sure that it's not going to bleed when you add water, or you know, which these artist loft pens will not bleed. So um, okay, and then I want a lighter blue around there. The color. 
And really this lighter blue on the peacock feather turns like a beautiful green iridescent, you know, but I just have to accept that it's hard to imitate that color and I'm just going to settle for a nice blue here because again I made so many separate peacock feather paintings like this that got really muddied when I tried to blend certain colors together. But if you want to, you know, try being very delicate and adding this, this kind of okra brown and medium brown together and the green and the blue and see what you get, you know, you might have better luck than I did. So I'm just going to combine those two browns. And I'm going to fill in the brown part here using the same little wrist flicking action so I can get some of that linear nature to show up. And I just like the, the painterly quality that I can get with the, the wax pastels this way. Um, and I think I added a little bit of that reddish brown, which I already have some right there with the black, just to give that brown another dimension. And, you know, feel free to be playful with this. It doesn't have to look exactly like your feather. I'm going to go ahead and fill in the rest of my blue here in the center. Just to not leave that blank in case I don't come back to it. Okay, and then we've got the green. Is that really the time? Are we really almost out of time here? Oh my gosh. Okay. We are. Went by really fast today. It did I know? And then I got tripped up a little bit getting started here on the peacock feather, and all of a sudden we got four minutes left. Okay, well let me get a little bit of green here, and then I might just have to switch to my my other one. Um, so you want a little bit of yellow because I think that's the only color I haven't covered here. So you want some yellow and some green. I might have to mix those quite a bit to get that limey green to happen. Okay, so then you'll fill that in everywhere that you're seeing green on the peacock feather. And then on, I'm just going to switch to my other example here. And then so I had that limey green color and then brown again. And then I kind of just you know, alternated between those colors to get, you know, all these, these pieces down here. There's some purple, kind of a violet that I was seeing as well. So if you wanted to mix your, your violet and maybe some pink too, just to give it another dimension, I'm, I'm definitely seeing where I added some pink and purple as well. And I think that's just because I have another peacock feather in my house that's got a lot of pink and violet in it. And I just wanted to bring some of that into it, even though it was mostly missing from, from this feather. Okay, and then with the barred owl feather, where is my, oh my gosh, y'all. I thought I was using my, my blank watercolor paper for my, my color swatch. And this whole time I have been using the back of my, my owl feather as my color swatch. So let me flip it over here. Look at that, how strong that Artist Loft watercolor paper is that didn't bleed through. <laughs> okay, so. Ooh, all right, so we just need brown. 
and black for this one mainly, and a little bit of that reddish brown, um, just to give it another dimension. So we've got the brown and then some light brown, and this one is going to go really fast. So I've got a couple of different browns and then my black. And just for fun, I put this reddish brown in there, um, or that that deep red, that wine red color. And that's just because, you know, art should be fun and adding a little bit of color to make something more interesting to yourself is never wrong, in, in my opinion. So even though I wasn't seeing that reddish brown in there, I just liked that color and wanted to use it. So we're going to water this one down quite a bit because you know this brown is very transparent on on the owl feather so and then i'm just going to do a big wash all over the whole thing and again i'm going right to the edge of that line you don't have didn't have to draw the line because the color will imply it for us. Our eye will see the line. It's one of those things that, you know, I can say things like that over and over again and people will still want to draw the line. But until you see the finished product, then you're like, oh, okay, that's why not drawing that line is helpful. All right, and then the black really just to like kind of emphasize the pattern is why I wanted the black. Pull some of it out, but you know, you can have like a push and pull between letting it bleed in there. And then if it's too much, you can take it back out, let it dry, put it back in. But keep it really loose and washy like that. And that is pretty much it. And then the last thing I did was just go back in with the wax pastels on top, like I did with that first one. And I just added, you know, on top when they were dry, just to give it more texture. You can do it when it's wet still too, but it's going to just bleed. But if you do it once it's dry, then it, it really gives it an extra dimension of, of texture there. All right. Well, I wish we, uh, if, had an extra minute or two. Jimena, do you mind spotlighting a few people or do we need to cut it cut it off? Um, we can spotlight a few people. Okay, yeah, and just real quick, see some. Okay, let me see. We have um, one second. Um, okay, Barbara. Oh, that's gorgeous, Barbara. Great job. Then we have Annette. Oh, that's really nice in it. Oh, you used a bigger sheet of watercolor paper. I love it. We have Arthur. Oh, Arthur, those are gorgeous. Love the overhead view. Thank you. And then um, Cindy. Really nice. And Allie. Oh, very nice. And Kylie. Oh, I like how you're getting more texture in there. Okay, cool. Well, thank you all so much. I really enjoyed it. And uh, I will be on my um, my Instagram here in just a few minutes doing the, the live Q&A that I, I've started doing after the classes. So if you want to join me there at Adrian Hodge Art in just a couple minutes, I'll uh, be doing that. And you know, I can keep answering any questions about this process or, or anything else. Um, related to the classes. Thank you all so much. And next week, um, I believe is a class on uh, portrait drawing using a graphite ground. So hope to see you all for that one. Thank you so much, Adrian. Thanks everyone for joining us today. See you next class. Thank you. Goodbye. Goodbye.